Step eight is being aware of prohibited practices. Now LSW and RRP treat this a little bit differently. LSW does not specifically prohibit the use of certain tools, but it does recognize that some tools will create more dust than others. So you see some of these sitting in front of me here. If you're using a tool that does create dust, you wanna make sure according to LSW to either add a shroud attached to a HEPA vac like you see here, very simple one, all the way to some very complex ones with this circular saw down on the end, collecting all that dust right at the source. But if you're not using a shroud attached to a HEPA vac, you can then bump up the level of containment. So you would bump up to a level two of full containment and treat it like that. With RRP, they actually say that certain power tools cannot be used without an attachment to a HEPA vac, meaning a shroud and a HEPA vac setup. The other thing they say you can't use is heat. Basically using open flame torching to ease up paint or window glazing. Can't do that. So this is gonna be out. And the other thing is that you cannot use things like power sanders, power planers, power grinders, needle guns, and abrasive blasters without having them hooked up to a HEPA vac. When we say HEPA vac, we're being very specific. Now here's a lot of different HEPA vacs that we have here on this table. There's plenty more out on the market. All kinds of sizes, shapes, some of them like this one, you can wear as a fanny pack. Others are gonna roll on wheels. Some are just for dry use. Some are for wet and dry. You'll need to find one that works for your specific application. It is not a shop vac. Now, even if the shop vac says HEPA on it, meaning it has a HEPA filter in it, it does not meet the requirements under the rule. The rule states that it needs to be an actual HEPA vac, meaning that all of the exhaust is filtered by that HEPA filter. If you open up one of these, you can see that there's plenty of spots around here for air to escape. We've all turned on our shop vacs before and seen the particles in the sunlight that shoot out the back of them. You don't want that to happen when you're working with lead-based paint dust. Let's open up a HEPA vac now. The first thing you'll notice about a HEPA vac, aside from the obvious price differences, is that all of the pieces fit very tightly. Everything is gasketed. Now we can open this one up because we haven't used it ever on lead-based paints. If you have used it on lead-based paints, all of this needs to be done at your facility, not at the client's home, but at your facility and inside an enclosed bag. So you'll be working like that. You notice that there's a couple of different filters and I've left a lot of the debris on these just so you can see how much it's picking up. The first one is a large particulate filter. These are inexpensive and are designed to do just that, to grab all the large particles coming into your vacuum. So you can protect the secondary filter. In this case, this is a uh, secondary filter, looks a lot like the uh, air filter on a small, uh, uh, small car like a Honda Civic. And then if you look on the inside, you'll notice that there is a HEPA filter. This is the final step of filtration before that air leaves the vacuum. Let's close this back up and pop back into containment for step nine. Step nine is the cleanup and teardown. Both rules go about it pretty much the same way. The first thing you wanna do go ahead and take your HEPA vac and you're going to vacuum high to low. So you're going to vacuum starting with your highest spots here, working all the way down onto your floor plastic and you're going to work your way out of the room. A couple things to note about the HEPA vac. First thing you'll note is that I'm using a, uh, a nice wide wand here. If you've ever tried vacuuming plastic before, you'll realize why I'm using one like this really lets a lot of air displace across this wand so you're not sucking up little chunks of plastic as you're going. And that's the other thing. That's one of the reasons why we have recommendations for four mil plastic on the walls. It's a lot easier to vacuum. The other thing you'll see is on the HEPA vac, I've placed poly all around the hose. Now any tool that comes into your containment needs to be cleaned before it leaves containment. 
and it's pretty darn hard to uh, clean up between all those crevices on a HEPAVAC hose. So we like to cut a strip of poly about that wide, long, run it all the way down the length of your hose, and just secure it along that seam with a piece of duct tape. Then at the one end that you're using, go ahead and put a wrap of duct tape on there so uh, it'll move along with the hose. Once you've completed the uh, HEPAVAC process, the next thing you want to do is mist down all of your plastic. Again, you're working high to low. The reason you're going to do this is because that mist will keep all of those fine dust particles captured in the water droplets. So when you're folding all this plastic dirty side in, you're going to keep that dust in there without it puffing out all over the place. So let's go ahead and take some of this down. Now we're always going to treat it very, very carefully. We want to make sure we're not getting any of that dust puffing out into areas where we don't want it. So for some of these, you're treating it like you're folding your best linens. We'll kind of drop this down here onto our floor plastic. And you see we've tried to keep it dirty side in. And we've tried to be pretty careful during the whole process. So once we've got our vertical walls down or anything covering up uh, vertical spaces, we'll go ahead and take out the floor plastic as well, going through those same motions. Now that we've got our containment down, we really just go through some of the same processes that we just went through for the cleaning. We're going to take our HEPAVAC and we're going to vacuum high to low working our way out of the room. And then we're going to go ahead and work on the wet cleaning process. And that's really two steps. The first is any vertical surfaces should be wet wiped. You can use disposable wet wipes for this and go ahead and, and put them in your trash. For the floor, you want to use a two bucket mop system. So we have one right here. This has the clean side that we're going to use to actually mop the floor with and then squeeze out all the extra dirty stuff into this second bucket here. With carpet, cleanup requires a HEPAVAC with a beater bar. Now for LSW, they want you to clean the area you contained and then go ahead and clean anything that uh, could possibly be dirty from either walking back and forth through containment or, or whatever. With RRP, they have very specific distances. You clean the area that you contained plus two feet out in all directions.